Hey friends, it feels like it has been an age since I talked to you last. It feels like a month. Uh, I've just been loading up the honey onto my truck here. It's time to take this into the farmer's market. Jenny said this is the best, pri best time of year to get the best price for it. So let's hop in the truck and get this going. And I'll uh, fill you in on what's been happening. It feels like so long since I spoke to you. Um, all right, we've got honey to sell, and I need to move the eggs. I've been taking the eggs out of the um, chicken coop. They are getting very productive, so I need to make space over there for more eggs. And then I've got a lot of planting to do. I have rented really need to get a better visibility here. Yeah, see that truck almost took me out. Um, I have rented a planter for planting the crops in these fields. Basically they're all going to use the special planter that I rented instead of the cedar that I bought, which is great. Um, I've got to do sugar beet and sunflower and corn and soybeans. I can't do them all this month. Uh, it's not the right time yet for soybeans and corn, but I'm going to try to get the sugar beet and the sunflowers in this month. And then I need to fertilize those other two fields on uh, the oasis side of the road that are going to be harvested in a couple months. It's time for their second application of fertilizer. So I've got a lot going on. I also have a bit of news, which I can't share with you all the details yet, but I can share, ooh, very heavy load. No. Oh no. Uh, all right, well that was fun. I almost hit that car. This, uh, all this honey <laughs> made the stopping time on this truck a little bit slow. Um, let's just pull over here and I'll share this news with you real quick before I take this honey in to see Jenny. So the factory is doing well. Um, Javon has just been staying very busy with everything. He's been sort of moving a lot of byproduct and he's processed all of the grain I brought into flour and is now making bread and I've got all this pig food over here I need to move. Um, but Javon's doing great with the factory. We've uh, put up another little house next to Javon's. Javon gave me permission to do this. I put up this house. I put this house up for my new worker. Uh, it is official. I have hired somebody who's going to run my staff out here in the frontier as I slowly build up a roster of employees, I guess. I don't know what to consider Nelson. I don't know if I would say he's an employee. I don't know how long he's planning to stay out here. Uh, you know he's been helping me with the cows and with my little dairy, which I think I need to upgrade as my cows are becoming more productive. And next month, actually, I'm expecting a bunch of calves. So my output is going to go up as those new calves age. So I need to do a bigger dairy at some point. And I don't know if I can consider Nelson a permanent employee or if he's just here while he's working through whatever he's working through with Lisa. I don't know if he's planning to go back to Ravenwood. So I may need to hire somebody eventually to do work with the cows. But yeah, I've got a, a foreman who has no employees yet, but he will. I'm leaving that hiring decision up to him. I can't tell you his name yet. He is still working out some details with his family. Uh, so until he gets all that sorted out, I am not at liberty to give you more information about who that is. 
but I've got that little house set up for him so he is starting officially as my foreman this month actually um, he's going to be helping me with the fields and for the moment he's also going to do a lot of work moving uh, things back and forth because I've had Javon sort of moving stuff for me but it's not his job he's just running this factory but he's been sort of bringing over things that he has produced from my goods to the farmer's market for Janie to sell. And my foreman is going to take over that so Javon can focus on running the factory. And he'll be helping out with the animals and the fields. And we're going to need help in the fall because it's going to get very busy. But for now, I think it's probably enough that the two of us can manage it. So yeah, I'm very excited about that. We're slowly growing. Growing a little empire out here. Okay, I will get this unloaded here for Jenny. And uh, I'll bring you back in, I guess, when I go pick up the planter that I rented to plant the... I guess I'll start with the sugar beets. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I'm over here at the shop, and I need to show you something else before I head out. Oh, I got uh, around 37000 for the honey, and I'm actually really happy with that, and I'm happy with the bees, so I think I might put up a few more hives soon. Uh, but I now own this monstrosity. This is similar to the roller that I have, but it's twice the size. It is absolutely massive. Uh, Eddie let me know about this was coming up used, so it's a roller. There aren't, I mean, there's some moving parts, obviously, but this seems like a good thing to buy used. It was 60% off or thereabouts. So yeah, I got a really good deal on it. Unfortunately, I can't run it with the tractor that I have. It needs 350 horsepower, and I think my tractor is around 310 horsepower. So I need to buy a bigger tractor, which I've been saying I'm going to do anyway. So now I really need to. Um, and this is the seeder that I bought. I think I showed you that before, but I'm not doing anything that requires seeding right now. I actually need a planter for the crops that I'm about to be planting. So we'll just get in the tractor and take my rented planter out there to the fields and get going. Yeah, I'm really excited about having a, a bigger roller. That is one of my least favorite jobs, and anything I can do to make it go faster, I'm very pleased about. I've already got a little bit of uh, seed and fertilizer ready to go in this, and I've got more out there in the farmyard. If you recall, I bought a bunch last month to stock up for planting and also for the greenhouses which I have topped up, so yeah, that'll be plenty to get on with, I think. So the other thing I kind of wanted to mention, I don't really know what to do about this. Um, that blue continental that showed up on my property, uh, those guys have been back a couple of times. I don't know what to do. I'm obviously not just going to hand over money to them. They can't prove any ownership. They won't tell me who their client is. Anybody really should go through my lawyer. So obviously they're just trying to shake me down and I, I don't know what to do in that kind of situation. I've never been in this kind of encounter before. I really wish they would put a stoplight here gets so stupid busy. Are you turning or are you going straight? Oh, you're turning. Okay. So, I obviously haven't given them the money. I keep putting them off. I feel like I'm going to have to deal with this soon. And I don't know how. And I really don't like that. So, that is a less pleasant bit of news. Um... On the more pleasant side of things, the restaurant out there near Old Town, my Flying Saucer Pizzeria, um, that has launched officially and done really well. 
I'm really surprised by how many people actually want to go out there and, I guess, see Old Town and see the flying saucer flying around every night. We actually get a fair number of people for both services, both the daytime service and the night service. It's been packed. So I'm excited about that, but also feeling a little conflicted because that sort of opened the door for something else I wasn't thinking about. You know, I mentioned that uh, I've been going out there into Old Town to try to find any sign of Leo or Phoenix out there for months now. It's been, what, six months since Leo disappeared? I know it's a long time and I probably should give up at this point, but I'm not. Anyway, I guess me talking about that openly on the videos and now having that restaurant out there that people can go to has made other people a lot more open to Old Town and being out in the frontier in general, because I have started running into people out there in Old Town. Other people are now wandering around out there exploring. It's not just me. So I've kind of been willing to take the risk myself because I care about Leo and want to know what happened and if I can somehow bring him back home. But I don't want other people out there. What are, I don't want people to get in, injured or in some kind of trouble. So I don't feel great about the fact that suddenly I've opened the door to this. And I don't know why it didn't occur to me that people would do this because people do ridiculous things all the time. So yeah, I don't know what to do about that. Kind of feels like I'm responsible for it and I should be doing something, but I don't know what. And of course that makes me wonder if that's what Frontier Security was so worried about all along. And also what is out there for people to find? Is it nothing? Is it something? Are they going to get hurt? Is there other stuff we're going to uncover? I can only cover so much ground on my own. But now that there are other people out there also poking around, I assume whatever there is to find will be found faster. So, that's a thing that's happening. Um, I guess I'm ready to go. This seems to be all set. So I'm going to do a row at each end so I'm not running into my other field there. And then I'll just go up and down, I guess. And we'll get this planted. We'll go into a time lapse and I'll... Uh, Talk to you when I'm done. See you in a little bit.
Well, that went faster than I thought it would. I'll get over to my other yard, swap out what's left of this uh, sugar beet seed for my sunflower seeds, and then we'll get over here and do this other field here, this giant one, and sunflowers, which will be kind of awesome. Really looking forward to when they grow, and I've got this giant field of sunflowers. So, you might have noticed while I was uh, seeding there, I got a phone call. That was my attorney. I had messaged them about the guys in the car. I don't know what to do, and I, I'm not going to be an idiot, right? So I talked to the attorney, and they said, I really need to involve Frontier Security at this point, which I'm a little bit torn about because those guys were making a big deal about how their client wanted privacy and wanted the matter to be dealt with privately, but I'm not going to be an idiot, right? And um, just hand it over. So I think I do need to follow my lawyer's advice and go talk to Frontier Security about it. I'm not sure what they'll do, and I know I'm not exactly on their good list right now with me talking publicly about going into Old Town and everything and starting that restaurant. But, uh, yeah, I gotta do something. Alright, I'm gonna get these seeds loaded into this planter, and then we'll get over there and plant the sunflowers. I'll see you in another time lapse.
Okay, I got that planting done and I've rolled those fields. I've got this fertilizer spreader all emptied. It was full of lime and now I've put fertilizer in it. So let's get some fertilizer on these two fields here on this side. And then after this, I think I'm going to head over to the Frontier Security Station in town where I was a guest for a little while and see about uh, who I should talk to about what's going on with those guys in that car who keep coming out here. Check it out, these trees have just gotten so big and they're starting to get leafy. I'm really excited just beautiful trees. Uh, the little ones are still practically invisible. The other ones are still saplings, which I would expect at this stage. They're not that old. But yeah, oh, I think actually, I meant to mention this. I've decided to go ahead, uh, let me get out of here real quick, um, along the road up there near the animal pens. I don't really know what to do with that space between the road and the railroad. There's not a lot of width, and I was able to fit that little shop there and that little lime uh, production thing but mostly anything I would want to build is too big to build there so I'm gonna get a tree planter I'm just gonna plant some trees along the road up there so that'll help with the erosion the wind coming across toward that direction from here and also from there out to here the other place I'd like to do that is sort of up in that direction along the sort of agricultural co-op there out toward uh, Flying Saucer Pizzeria um, and I'd like to put in a road there that's heading in that direction but that property is not cheap I think it's like oh it's over 400,000 if I remember right I'd have to check again um, it seems like a lot of money to spend just to plant some trees, but it would help with screen the wind for erosion purposes. And having a road to get out there with the bus especially would be safer. I'm worried about the long-term damage possibilities of that bus or even like a tip hazard. I don't really want to get in trouble with a bunch of citizens falling over, tipping over in a bus, having to get medical help out here. I don't know. So I'm thinking about that, but I also want to buy a bigger tractor and that's going to be a lot of money. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but these are sort of on my radar. So I'm going to get into a time lapse and we'll get this fertilizer spread and then I'll head in town and see if I can get some advice about what to do about these guys who keep coming around. I don't want them out here. So we'll see. Maybe they'll have some, some suggestion for me. I'll see you in a minute.
that was about as helpful as you might imagine. I don't want to speak too freely while I'm here. Let me get in my little side by side and head out back home. I took my lawyer's advice, came over here to talk to them about this guy is bothering me, and basically the conversation went like, have they actually threatened you? No. Have they said anything about who hired them? No. Then there's not much they can do about it, apparently. So I guess I am just on my own, as usual until something bad happens and then maybe they'll step in and do something about it. I admit in the past this is where I would have benefited from my friendship with Leo. He could have leaned on some people to uh, prioritize this. I gave them descriptions. I'm sure they've got to be familiar with these guys because obviously what they're doing is not on the up and up. But uh, they don't seem to want to do anything about it. So poor me. Anyway, I rented a tree planter. And I got some trees planted out here along the railroad, like I said I would. The spring and fall are the good times to do that, and I was afraid if I left it too long it would be too late. Oh, let's just go over here and see you real quick. Um, I wasn't sure how big they would get. Uh, one of these, the, the ones that are sort of in the middle, are the American Elm. And there, I've got one of them over there. They spread out pretty far. And then there's a Shagwar Hickory over there, and I... I don't know, um, I hope that's not too close to the railroad track. If it is, I might have to cut it down later. I'm gonna get in here and do a feed mix for my cows. They're working hard, they're gonna have babies in the next few weeks, I think. So, uh, gotta make sure. They're keeping their energy up. Isn't that right, ladies? Hey, girls. You doing good? All right. Great. I'm happy to see you, too. Okay. Well, I will get that feed mix whipped up and feed it to them. And I guess I'll see you all next month when I got to plant the corn and soybeans. And these other two fields. Can't wait to see these fields going. I think that'll look pretty spectacular. Really starting to build this up. Bye for now. I'll catch you next time.